May 2023, welcome to a number one station for news and updates. I'm your presenter, Abdurrahman Yusuf, and tonight, these are the stories that are making our headlines. Somali women's courageous stand against terrorism rewarded with $10,000 by Prime Minister Barre. Heavy rains force families to flee homes as Shabele River floods in Hiran region. Unified national examinations to take place on May 27th as Putlands opts out. State case against three men reveals growing influence of ISIS in Somalia. Hailed for her bravery in refusing to let Al Shabaab militants use her house as a launching pad for bomb attacks against government soldiers. For her courageous act, the Prime Minister of Somalia, Hamza Abdibarre, presented her with a $10,000 reward during a public function in the district. Mama Farhio, a woman from Kahda district in Mogadishu, has been hailed for her bravery in refusing to let Al-Shabaab militants use her house as a launching pad for bomb attacks against government soldiers. For her courageous act, the Prime Minister of Somalia, Hamza Abdibare, presented her with a 10,000 reward during a public function in the district. As reported, Mama Farhio turned down the militants who had demanded to use her house for carrying out attacks against government soldiers. Despite the tremendous pressure and fear of retaliation, she stood firm in her commitment to protecting her community and refusing to allow the militants to hide in her home. The woman's bravery has been widely praised, with the Prime Minister commending her for her quick thinking and for setting an example for others to follow. As a gesture of appreciation for her bravery, Prime Minister Hamza Abdibare directed the local government to repair Mama Farheo's house, which was destroyed after the militants failed to secure the place. The Prime Minister has also assured that all those who were injured in the attack will be treated at a government expense. This brave act by Mama Farheo is a strong reminder that ordinary people can have a significant impact in the fight against terrorism. The incident also highlights the ongoing threats faced in Somalia, where Al-Shabaab fighters continue to carry out attacks on civilians and government officials. In light of these challenges, the Somali government is intensifying its effort to combat terror groups by engaging the public and promoting greater cooperation between communities and security forces. It is hoped that recognizing acts of bravery like Mama Farheo's, the government can encourage more citizens to take a stand against terrorism and work towards building a safer and more secure Somalia for all. The Minister of Education in Somalia has announced that the Unified National Examinations for Grade 12 students will take place on May 27th. The examinations will be conducted in all federal member states and Banadi region, except in Portland, which has declined to allow its students to participate in the countrywide testing. The Ministry of Education in Somalia has announced the Unified National Examinations for Grade 12 students will take place on May 27th. The examinations will be conducted in all federal member states and Bernardi region, except in Portland, which has declined to allow its students to participate in the countrywide testing. This exercise is an annual tradition, and this marks the ninth year these unified exams have been conducted. These exams are for students who have completed their grade 12 studies, and prior to this unified national system, umbrella organizations administered exams based on different syllabi, borrowed from countries such as Kenya, Saudi Arabia, and Sudan. However, the administration of the unified national examinations has not been without some challenges. The Portland Regional Government, which has declined to allow its students to participate in the exams, has cited concerns over the treatment of Portland and the lack of cooperation from the federal government in the country's debt relief process. This move by Portland Regional Government has drawn criticism from Prime Minister Hamza Barre this week. Speaking in a press conference, the Prime Minister called Portland's decision tantamount to derailing the development of the country and debt relief process and expressed his disappointment about the government's isolationist posture. 
The Prime Minister's comments underscore the broader challenges in Somalia's education system. The country has made progress in the past decade, but there are still significant gaps in the access to education, particularly for girls in rural areas. The country, also facing ongoing challenges with terrorism and conflict, which disrupts schooling and creates instability. Nevertheless, the unified national exams are an important step towards greater coherence and standardization in Somalia's national education. A case filed by the state against three men who were arrested on their way to join the Islamic ISIS in Portland, Somalia, has lifted the lid on the growing influence of the terror group in Africa. ISIS, or Daesh, has now a presence in southern Africa, Mozambique, DRC, Somalia, as well as the Sahel region. A case filed by the state against three men who were arrested on their way to join the Islamic State in Puntland. Somalia has lifted the lid on the growing influence of the terror group in Africa. ISIS, or Daesh, now has a presence in South Africa, Mozambique, DRC, Somalia as well as the Sahel region. Two brothers, Ayub Bunadi, 32, and Mohamed Bunadi, 22, as well as Qasim Ahmed, 29, were arrested in Isiolo County on April 7th aboard a Moyale-bound bus by the Anti-Terrorism Police Unit. The three have been on the run from the police after warrants were issued against them for crimes they are suspected to have committed in their home county, Lamu. They were then arraigned at Kahawa Law Courts on April 11th, where police were given 30 days to detain them as they continue with investigations. During their interrogation, the three said that they travelled from Tanzania through Lunga Lunga to Nairobi's Isli estate and were to cross over to Ethiopia before eventually moving to Somalia to join the terror group. They sneaked into the country from Tanzania, where they have been hiding after investigations linked them to the murder of police officers, chiefs, their assistants and community leaders in Lamu County. The three men during their interrogation told police that the plan to join Daesh in Punlan was mooted by Ali Omar Bonadi, who is Ayub and Mohammed's brother. Police believe he is currently in Morogoro, Tanzania. Ali fled from Kenya to Tanzania after he realized that he was being sought by the police over alleged involvement in the killing of security officers and government officials in Lamu County. Police believe that the three men chose to flee to Puntlan after Kenyan authorities sought help from Tanzanian authorities to apprehend them. Several families have been forced to evacuate their homes in the Iran region after the Shabele River overflowed due to heavy rainfall in the southern Ethiopian highlands where the river origin originates. Several families have been forced to evacuate their homes in the Iran region after the Shabela River overflowed due to heavy rainfall in the region and southern Ethiopia highlands where the river originates. According to the Food and Agriculture Organization FAO and the Somali Water and Land Information Management, the river level is at Baladwini have steadily increased from 6.38 on 26 April to 7.9 of yesterday, both in high flood risk level. As a result, hundreds of families have been packing their household items into different types of transport to move to higher ground in Bledwain. This flooding exacerbates the perennial displacement, property destruction, and this experienced in Bledwain town, despite attempts by the government and NGOs to establish a permanent solution to the Shabala River challenge. Thank you. That's all we are prepared for you tonight from Odeski in Mogadishu. I would like to thank the Dalsa Media Fraternity for making this news bulletin a success. Have yourself a lovely night.